Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today I'm going to be doing a Blu-ray and DVD update for November 2016. Uh, so we have a huge stack of DVDs, including a fair few new releases, and some Blu-rays too. Uh, so first up for the Blu-rays, we have Deadpool, which I grabbed this uh, from eBay for only £7, which isn't so bad, and I originally watched the film in cinemas back in February. And it was great, I really loved the humour, the gory violence is terrific, and I quite like the structure of this movie, how simultaneously we have uh, the origin story of Deadpool, as well as the revenge story with Francis. Uh, so overall a really great movie, so that is Deadpool. Uh, next up we have the fifth installment into the Mission Impossible franchise, Rogue Nation, uh, which I saw this as well back in cinemas last year, and uh, honestly I thought it was great. Uh, not as good as the fourth one, but still a really great action movie, and I really loved the stunts uh, performed by Tom Cruise, such as the plane sequence at the beginning and uh, the water tank scene, which was absolutely incredible. And I quite like the uh, chemistry between Ving Rhames, Simon Pegg, and Jeremy Renner too, so overall a great movie. Uh, next up we have a film from 1964 and that is Doctor Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. A Stanley Kubrick film starring Peter Sellers and George C. Scott. Uh, a really great movie. It was sort of a satirical black comedy uh, towards the Cold War which was absolutely incredible. I really enjoyed this especially towards the end where the humour really started to erupt and uh, overall I thought it was incredible especially Peter Sellers as Doctor Strange Love himself uh, which Sellers actually portrays three characters in this movie but I think uh, the best character is definitely Doctor Strange Love, and uh, the dialogue that was granted to that character was terrific and I believe Kubrick actually let Sellers just uh, go ahead and make up his own lines which is quite humorous as well as the SD disc and the inside artwork of one of the characters riding the bomb and uh, overall a great movie, I really enjoyed this and I would definitely recommend checking it out and uh, the final four Blu-rays are all from the same franchise, and that is the Bourne Collection, uh, which we have the trilogy starring Matt Damon, uh, which we have the Bourne Identity, Supremacy, and Ultimatum. Uh, my least favourite out of all four of them, in fact, was Supremacy. Just, it was really unnecessary, felt very repetitive of identity, and uh, was all spurred onwards from the murder of uh, Matt Damon's character's girlfriend, which was kind of frustrating. Um, so I didn't really like the second one. Ultimatum was quite good, uh, concluding the series to some degree and uh, the fourth film wasn't as bad um, Edward Norton's portrayal of uh, sort of a CIA style officer was quite cool um, but the structure and overall pacing of the film was all over the place so I didn't really enjoy this one as much uh, but Jeremy Renner was quite good um, despite give, being given such a weak script really but um, yeah not a bad film and uh, my personal favourite is definitely Born Identity so um, these movies are definitely worth checking out uh, so let's move on to the DVDs First up for the DVDs, we have season 16 of Family Guy, which I actually got on day of release in HMV for only £15, and for 20 episodes, that's an absolute bargain, and this season was great. I really thoroughly enjoyed it, watched it over the course of a week, and I loved it. Uh, some great episodes in particular, the one that they chose for the front cover artwork, Candy Cohog Marshmallow, and I really liked the finale as well, which was Road to India, which is good to see the road episodes making a return. Uh, so that's season 16 of Family Guy, and I mentioned I got that in HMV. MV, uh, because at the same time I got this. This is a little free promotional DVD uh, based around the five current DC television shows, and it's sort of a taste of DVD, uh, giving the pilot episodes from the five TV shows Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, Gotham, and uh, Legends of Tomorrow, and the latter three I had not checked out, uh, so it was quite good to get a little sample of them, so Supergirl uh, honestly wasn't awful. It wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be, but the acting was really dry. Uh, Gotham I was most intrigued by, most impressed by. I might grab the season one and two blu-ray box set uh, for christmas or something and legends uh, it does seem quite cheesy but honestly i really like it for wentworth miller as um captain cold as a proper character rather than sort of a side character that he is in flash and uh it looks, seems quite intri uh, intriguing so i might grab that at some point as well um, but super guy may stream online just to avoid buying it um so that's just a free little promotional dvd which i believe the offer is if you buy any of these uh, you can grab this for free but i asked if i could take one and they were nice enough to let me so um, um, that's the little free promotional DC TV um, DVD. Uh, next up we have another Seth MacFarlane related comedy and that is American Dad Volume 10. Uh, great volume, I really enjoyed it. Not as much as Volume 9 but still very good. Um, Stephen Snott's Test Tubular Adventure was on this box set which I quite liked that episode and uh, Faking Bad was quite good as well where Steve and Haley set up a business creating fake IDs. Uh, so some good episodes on here, so that's uh, Volume 10 of American Dad. 
Next up we have Season 1 and Season 2 of the CW TV show iZombie, uh, which iZombie is a very interesting take on the subgenre of zombies within horror, uh, just because it really does not follow the traditional generic conventions of uh, the apocalyptic outbreak and zombies consuming the world and eating people, etc. Instead, it's a very small collective of people, including the main character Olivia Moore, that are in fact zombies, and the rules of zombieism are very different in this show, rather than uh, walking around aimlessly and mindlessly. Uh, uh, you can actually retain your humanity by devouring the brains of other people and instead you take on their characteristics and sort of portray a different character within uh, each episode, which is what the main character does and I really quite like uh, Rose McIver's uh, variations of character within the show, which she is the main actress that portrays Liv. Um, just a really great show, very interesting. The finale of season one was terrific, very gory and gruesome as it should be for a zombie show and I really like this, so that is I Zombie season one and at season two I have not finished off yet and that is because I I believe this is in fact a fake bootleg copy, um, which I got this from a UK seller claiming it's a Region 1 American release that they imported, and um, the quality on the actual DVDs is utterly atrocious, and uh, I really don't want to watch this just because it's really hard to watch, and the fuzzy images, and it's just dreadful, so um, I'll have to grab another copy of this directly from the US, or um, just wait for the UK release to come out. So that's Season 2 of iZombie. Moving on, we have a few movies, beginning with Wonderland, which I really enjoyed this film. I initially grabbed this because it stars John Sim, but it was a great drama film, uh, focusing on three different generations of the same family through Bonfire Night. And I actually did watch this on Bonfire Night, and it was a great watch. A really interesting drama film, captured quite a lot of different locations throughout London, and it was overall very interesting, so I definitely recommend checking out this film. So that's Wonderland. Next up we have Train Spotting, which I was probably one of seven people in the entire universe who had not seen this film and I didn't intentionally do that I just never really had the interest in watching this film but I really enjoyed this, I regret not buying this sooner. Uh, really well directed by Danny Boyle and overall a great uh, performance from Ewan McGregor in particular, which I quite enjoyed the chemistry between the four main characters overall, um, in particular this guy, which I've forgotten his character's name but um, still a really enjoyable movie I loved the soundtrack, Primal Scream, Blur and um, Pulp, so many great bands were featured in this film and uh, overall some really interesting sequences as well the toilet scene towards the beginning uh, with the suppositories was quite bizarre and uh, just a quite a trippy film in some areas but yeah very humorous very funny brilliant overall and I really enjoyed this so that's train spotting and uh, next up we have Aliens, which I did have the big box set of um, Alien through to Alien Resurrection. And when I saw Alien Resurrection, I sold all the Alien-related DVDs I had because it completely ruined uh, the franchise for me. But Aliens really stuck out for me, and uh, so I thought I'd just grab it singularly on its own for 50p in CEX. And um, it's a pretty good movie. Um, of course, Sigourney Weaver, great actress, and uh, a very good movie. So that is Aliens. Uh, next up we have Lawrence of Arabia starring Peter O'Toole, a great movie, um, this is the two disc edition and it looks incredible, um, just a great film following Lawrence who is a British soldier and uh, he goes over to Arabia and starts to lead the Arabs into a little conflict with the Turks through World War One. and honestly a really incredible film, great pacing and uh, very long as well but very interesting so that is Lawrence of Arabia. Next up we have Rumblefish, a really cool 80s movie starring Matt Dillon and Mickey Rourke. Uh, stylistically this film is presented in black and white and overall was incredible. It really impressed me. I quite like the themes of the street folks and the gang violence and uh, Mickey Rourke's character being quite a high ranking uh, gang member throughout the film and uh, Matt Dillon's character of Rusty James really aspires uh, to carry on the reputation and basically steal the reputation that the motorcycle boy has, which the motorcycle boy, even his name is quite enigmatic. Very interesting character. I would definitely recommend watching this film more than once. Um, so that is Rumblefish, a very cool 80s film. And uh, next up we have The Virgin Suicides, directed by Sophia Coppola, which um, this was directed by the daughter of uh, Francis Ford Coppola, who directed Rumblefish, which is quite interesting. Uh, so The Virgin Suicides is a very cool sort of coming-of-age style film, uh, focusing on a group of guys who are very interested in this group of girls who are all sisters. It's based on a high school, and um, unfortunately these girls have very sort of pious, very strict parents who are very devoutly religious and so they are very restricted in ways that they can't exactly go 
out and have boyfriends. They can't obviously pursue the normality of a teenage girl. And uh, so one by one, they end up dying, which is very interesting and very sadistic, but I really loved and enjoyed this film. And I would definitely recommend checking it out. So that's The Virgin Suicides. Uh, next up, we have a Spike Lee film, 25th Hour. I'm not really a big fan of Spike Lee. Um, his later films are very disappointing in my opinion, but um, this one very much impressed me. It stars Ed Norton, one of my all-time favourite actors, and I was moved by this film. In particular, the beginning sequence with the dog, um, where Monty, the main character, is about to put it out of his misery and then sees it has some fight left in it, and so he lets it live and takes it to the vets, etc. And then uh, onwards from there, we realise that the character that Ed Norton is portraying of Monty is a drug dealer, and so he has... Uh, um, just less than a day outside prison walls before he actually goes to prison and the ending was very evocative as well so I really enjoyed this film very impressive uh, the only thing that kind of disappointed me was the bizarre uh, side story with Philip Seymour Hoffman's character of uh, sort of a teacher student style relationship which I did not really like quite cringy but um, yeah 25th hour very good movie Next up we have The Nightmare Before Christmas which I did initially own on DVD but the copy I had was unfortunately scratched uh, so I grabbed a new copy and it's a great film, one of my personal favourite Disney movies I love the soundtrack and the quirky character designs are very cool as well so that is The Nightmare Before Christmas uh, next up we have the second series of Carl Pilkington in The Moaning of Life, uh, which originally I watched, I think it was just Art and Identity when this um, series was first airing a year ago, and I didn't really like it, but um, I re-watched series one a couple of weeks ago, and I thought I'd give this a try again, and it wasn't as bad, um, Art was probably the weakest episode, but I really liked Waste, and The Body was quite an interesting episode as well, um, so not as good as Idiot Abroad, but just as entertaining, and I actually had the opportunity to meet Carl a couple of weeks ago, he was at a book signing in my area, and I got him to sign a book, which was terrific. So I got him to quote the uh, Ricky Gervais show with Socks Cut Off Your Freedom. And he's quite a down-to-earth guy, and it was a great experience. So it was um, that was actually my second time meeting Carl. I got him to sign the other uh, book tie-in to the Morning of Life series um, a couple of years ago. I think it was 2014. Um, so yeah, it was a really great uh, opportunity to meet him. So that is the More Moaning book uh, from Carl Pilgrim. Some really cool illustrations in here, which uh, Carl actually does illustrate his own work um, so that's quite good and uh, yeah so I'm looking forward to reading that at some point very soon and that is the second series of The Moaning of Life and to round off this update, we just have a couple of box sets left over, beginning with the Region 1 copy of The Office USA Season 1, uh, which if you look back to my previous update, I did mention that the Region 2 copy that I had in the 1-5 to box set um, had really squeaky audio, just the dialogue and every piece of audio on the disc was sped up, which was ridiculous, um, which was an issue with the conversion from the NTSC format to the PAL or PAL uh, format to match Region 2, so that was kind of frustrating, so this is the Region 1 copy, uh, which does in fact rectify that so that's very good and uh, not a bad season um, the first couple of episodes are very cringy because they literally just copy the UK office um, but the latter episodes aren't so bad so that is the first season of the US office and we also have season 8 and season 9 to finish off the entire show which I love the ending to this show a really great TV series definitely one of my personal favourites and uh, season 8 isn't as bad as people say it is in my opinion and uh, season 9 is terrific especially the ending and I love uh, the Dwight episodes to was the end. Um, so that is season 8 and season 9 of the US office. Next up we have the seasons 1 through to 3 box set of Arrested Development uh, which I'm really enjoying this show thus far. I'm only on season 2 and it's really good. A uh, really great unique comedy style and I cannot wait to finish this show off which thankfully there is a season 4 as well thanks to Netflix that rebooted the show in 2013 I believe. It unfortunately got cancelled after season 3. Um, but yeah overall I'm really enjoying this. A great series. I love the characters in particular Tobias and uh, Buster Bluth is quite funny as well so that is the 1 to 3 box set of Arrested Development development. And finally, to conclude this update, we have Alias Seasons 4 and 5, uh, which Alias is a really great spy action thriller series, uh, focusing on Jennifer Gardner's character of Sydney Bristow. And uh, so far, so good. I'm only on Season 2. I do have 1 through to 5 now, and uh, this box set is a 6-disc set, along with the other three uh, previous three box sets, and Season 5 is a 5-disc set. And apparently the finale is very underwhelming, which I'm hoping it won't be as bad for me, at least. But yeah, that's um, seasons four and five of Alias.
So, thanks for watching my Blu-ray and DVD update for November 2016. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I must apologise, I've been inactive for the past couple of weeks due to being ill with flu, uh, which obviously wasn't very fun, so I shall be uh, now going back to the weekly upload schedule. Um, so, thanks for watching as always. Be sure to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments if there's anything in this video you would like to see a review of, and uh, please subscribe down below for more.